Good morning, Facebook Live. Marcus here. Good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday morning, 8.15, and Jamie and I are here working away. I've been in the kitchen early. I've been doing, um, been working a lot uh, this morning. Today is our Project Resilience, our community meals. We're doing 125 community meals today, and uh, it was postponed from yesterday because of the high winds and all the rain. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday. And Friday this week that community meals are going out here in the town of Warsing. So um, I'm gonna jump in the kitchen in a couple minutes and cook our famous tuna. Uh, when I woke up this morning, uh, there was power. No power. <laughs> and so I got a little scared. I'm like, uh-oh. How we've, do we cook today? We've got a lot of like cooking to do with rice. We gotta cook rice in an electric cooker. We need the uh, we need the fans on for ventilation in the kitchen. Um, we have 125 meals to go out by 11 a.m. And on the on the Central Hudson site, what did it say this morning, Jamie? 11 a.m. restoration time. <laughs> we were like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. Good morning, everybody. I see Greg is on, uh, a lot of other people, so thank you. I'm going to jump in the kitchen here and cook our, our famous tuna dish, a little uh, demo on how I actually sear the tuna. Uh, I did a little video the other day on what our tuna is. It's Pacific Northwest caught from... Um, Washington and Oregon State. These are line caught fish, small fish, uh, 25 pounders, old enough to reproduce, but not old enough to bioconcentrate all the harmful mercury that tuna um, uh, is known for. Tuna is one of those fish that is known to con uh, um, contain lots of harmful or higher levels of mercury. And when I found this tuna 20 years ago, I said, oh my gosh, this tuna is awesome. This is a tuna that I have to serve. This is a, the safest tuna out there. I don't care what the price is, it's the safest tuna out there. This is what I deserve for myself and this is what our guests deserve. And this is the tuna we've been cooking literally for, since we opened uh, 15, uh, 17, 2003, 17 years ago. And I was cooking this tuna prior to this at a country club. And I found this um, fish, this tuna through a vendor called Eco Fish. Uh, Henry Lovejoy owns Henry and Lisa's Natural Seafood line. If you go into Whole Foods or health food stores, that's uh, their line. Henry's been a longtime friend of mine since 1999 when I sat next to him in a uh, dinner at the Culinary Institute of America at a sustainability conference. And that's how I learned all about all of my... I got a crash course sitting next to Henry on sustainable seafood. Um, Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I sat next to him and I just listened and absorbed, asked questions, and I probably became like his number one protege on on sustainability. Sustainability. I was one of his very first uh, restaurant clients in his business. So I'm going to jump into the kitchen right now and show you how we cook our tuna. Uh, Jamie's going to grab the camera from me, and uh, I got a few other updates this morning as well that I want to share with you of things that are going on. Um, so uh, let's see here. Right. All right, so, um, important. Um, we like to use all stainless steel pans on the restaurant. Let me actually get this on the heat. Do not use Teflon, it's uh, stainless steel. Uh, these are high quality. All Clad is probably one of the best brands out there, surgical grade stainless steel. When you heat pans, when you heat pans, um, especially aluminum, you start leaching things out. Teflon leaches things out. So, invest in really high quality. They will last a lifetime. We've been using these pans for about a decade, and we have used them, and they are amazing the quality. We have a couple all clads I've had for literally 25 years on the used commercially, and I bought them used, and um, they are uh, still an, uh, an amazing pan. They're up there. Um, I'm going to grab a glove here. That's the tuna that we're working with. How does it come, Marcus? It comes frozen? It comes frozen. It comes frozen something we're working on now too here. Um, this is chopped garlic and oil. Uh, we're selling these now. American garlic. Um, if you went to ShopRite and, or Walmart and looked at the chopped garlic, you'd find out this dehydrated garlic that's reconstituted with fresh American garlic, chopped, we chop it, and then we put it into local um, sunflower oil. And these are, I think, $3 we're selling those for. We're selling a lot of those. We're making a couple up now because we're doing some deliveries today. This is the tuna right here. Um, so, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, these went overnight under refrigeration, and I just pulled them out. So you can see that it's still frozen, which is perfect for this application. Um, we roll in sesame seeds. I've already done 10 pounds of tuna today, because tonight, 
is our tuna special. Tonight we're running our tuna entree for $19.99. That is the cheapest I think we've ever, ever, ever offered the tuna entree for. Um, and we're limited in the amount of orders we have. We probably have 30 orders tonight. These are black and brown sesame seeds. And there's no eggs, there's just roll, we literally just roll in. So these are, this is the head of the tuna right here, and this is the actual loin, so that's how that works. Um, when you buy these frozen from us, they come in two pieces, prior back. It has a little bit of belly fat to it, you just trim off. You can eat the belly fat, I don't like to sear it because it, it falls apart very easily. So, but equally those are, um, those are, um, it's edible. You can actually marinate in some soy sauce and then um, overnight with some soy sauce and some scallions and um, pan seared the next day on high heat uh, for a few moments and it's really, really, um, really good. So now, okay, I'm gonna do, my pan is getting hot over here. Sunflower oil. Don't want to put too much oil in here. If you put too much oil in here, the sunflower seeds will really swim. The sesame seeds, not the sunflower seeds. Sesame seeds, sesame seeds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, of this. That is it. That is the whole process of this tuna. You can see in there the inside. That's literally how long it takes to cook or how quick it takes. Literally five, six seconds on each side, smoking hot pan, a little bit of oil in there. And that pan I'm going to be able to use over and over for several more tuna because I have a lot more tuna here. But that right there, folks, is our albacore tuna. Um, uh, that is exactly what it is. And tonight's special, um, hopefully you were able to, to see that. Uh, we lost a little bit of recording in the kitchen. And so that's our albacore tuna. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming back in today. It's Tuesday, which means bread alone day. Bread alone products will be walking in the door any moment. Baguettes and miche. Um, they will sell out. They will sell out. Totally will sell out. Early. <laughs> and I can guarantee you our tuna We'll sell out tonight, too. Uh, Ming, you can turn the fan on now. So um, We're doing our community meals, and Ming is helping me in the kitchen. If anybody knows Ming from Ming Moon, uh, he used to own Ming Moon here in Ellenville a few years ago. He sold about five years ago. He does some work for us. Um, so we're doing our heat supplement with our community meals. We're doing chicken teriyaki today. Our hormone-free, antibiotic-free chicken. Our organic brown rice blend. Uh, Broccoli, local onions, and organic cabbage are going into that dish today. Really awesome. They're the same quality that we serve here in the restaurant are going out to the, for our community meals today uh, that go out. They're feeding about 500 people right now, three days a week. That number's growing of people in the town of Awarsing that need food. Project Resilience in, uh, on the Ulster County website, Project Resilience. You Google Project Resilience, Ulster County. You'll get onto the website, you can either donate money, because that fund is running out, or you can, if you need a meal, you go in there and register for a meal, and they will come to you three days a week, is the story with that, all right? So that's how that works. If you're just now logging, tuning in, uh, the first half of this video was me in the kitchen cooking our famous tuna, our famous albacore tuna. We have this albacore tuna in stock for sale, frozen raw loins. The demo I just did was how to actually cook it the way that we cook it. Um, it literally takes 15 seconds to cook this, uh, uh, these tuna loins, that's it. Uh, the demo was really quick, five seconds on each side, super hot, hot oil. I use sunflower oil to cook with in our kitchen. I've been using that oil for years. It's local Hudson Valley cold pressed. I believe it's for the, for the price, uh, for the quality, for the resistance, for the, um, Phone's ringing already, Jamie's taking orders. Um, all around, the all around attributes of that oil make it ideal for cooking. Um, if we had a deep fryer, that's the, that's the fryer, I, that's the oil I would put in the deep fryer if we had a commercial deep fryer. Uh, it is by far the best oil 
to cook with. Keep in mind that no oil is ideal to cook with. Every oil will have a breakdown point. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you do cook with oil and cook with as little bit of oil as possible when, uh, if you can. So our tuna's for sale. I believe it's like $17 a pound, frozen loins. Um, we have halibut coming in. Halibut was ordered. It's coming in Thursday. More tuna's coming in Thursday. Black cod, a.k.a. sablefish from Alaska, is coming in on Thursday. Sablefish is amazing. It's also called butterfish. Black cod, sablefish, or butterfish is what it's known as. You basically just broil that, a little bit of shot of wine, lemon, salt, a little bit of herbs, and you are in heaven with black cod, uh, a.k.a. sablefish or butterfish. It is an amazing, amazing fish. Um, pricey, but it's the same price as the halibut. We have a really good connection with our Alaskan seafood uh, co-op supplier, Alaska Gold, and they get us some amazing, amazing products. It's a tuna we've been using. Salmon we've been using here for years. We use their tuna. Uh, and again, our tuna is caught off the Pacific Northwest, off of Oregon and Washington State. It's the safest tuna on the market. Tuna is known to bioconcentrate all kinds of harmful mercuries because tuna is a large fish. It eats other fish. It lives for many years. But when you're dealing with these troll caught, these caught these small albacores, um, one hook, one line, you're dealing with a smaller fish, which allows you to, um, which allows the fish not to bioconcentrate all the harmful mercury. So I'm just adjusting my phone here. Uh, Ellie asked, uh, so is that how it's done? I've always um, overcooking it. That's how it's done. That is exactly how it's done, Ellie, and everybody else who's watching. Five seconds on each side, try to leave the inside frozen. If you can thaw it overnight in your refrigerator and the next day, um, just take it out on, through the package and within five or 10 minutes, the outside will start to, um, will start to um, soften up and the inside will stay frozen and you just roll that in sesame seeds and you sear hot oil five seconds on each side. This is crucial because when you, that's tuna cooks so quick and when you, when you cook it too much, it becomes dry, just like any tuna, it becomes dry. Um, fully cooked tuna is not enjoyable by many people. They want it rare, they want it raw in the center, it's sashimi, it's for sushi. So that's the story of that. Yes, so Ellie, so that is how. Tonight is Tuna Tuesday, Tuna Tuesday. I only have like enough tuna for like, I don't know, 30 orders, 25, I have to count after I sear everything, everything off. I already seared one case, I'm getting ready to sear another case. So, and so it's um, $19.99 for the tuna entree. If you want to buy tuna loins and you cook them yourself, it's $18.99 a pound. So, cod price is the same as halibut. So, I don't know how much I don't know how much tuna is here. I got to check. What? The tuna's getting low. <laughs> we have a lot. We, folks, we are going through so many grocery items. It is amazing, and we really appreciate the support. Really, really appreciate the support. We literally have another 100 pounds of fish coming in on Thursday. We had 100 pounds come in on Saturday. We had 30 or 40 pounds come in on Thursday, and we're just blowing through it like crazy. Um, this is all high-quality seafood that we use, all sustainable, all all certified from MSC, Friends of the Sea, um, Monterey Bay Aquarium. All the seafood that we serve here for years all checks out from everybody as sustainable. Shrimp, our tuna, um, our calamari, whatever we're getting. I've done years and years of research. And the way, the way this was all discovered was, as I, in the beginning of this video, I talked about me sitting next to Henry Lovejoy from Henry and Lisa's Natural Seafood. If you go into Whole Foods, you pick it up, you see it, it's in the frozen section. He is the strictest food dish, uh, fish purveyor I've ever met. The strictest, and I've talked to some of the best food seafood distributors here in New York City when I moved back from Colorado. I was in Westchester, I was in a country club. I had lots of money to throw around at seafood, and I've used a lot of really great seafood distributors like Steve Conley in Boston, um, Slavin Seafood here, um, True World Foods. Um, I've used a lot of really reputable seafood distributors. And Ecofish, Henry Lovejoy's company, Ecofish, was by far the strictest when it came to what was happening to our health and the environment with seafood and make sure that the seafood was sustainable. I learned so much from Henry of those first few years of buying 
of buying of buying food from him, uh, buying seafood from him. He doesn't really, they don't really wholesale anymore, but I know all the sourcing. I know where he gets his stuff from because he shared that with me. So we use the exact same specs that he uses in his frozen retail line because he doesn't really do wholesale anymore. But I was his very first customer back in 1999, 2000. I was Ecofish's like very first chef that was buying their products. Um, the tuna? People are already calling, folks. We're going to be out of the tuna probably in a couple hours. <laughs> um, I might need to call Alaska Gold and order more tuna for uh, for this week, for Thursday. So $19.99 is the cheapest we've ever, ever done our Tuesday, our tuna. It's also jerk chicken night tonight, $9.99. Uh, Jamaican jerk chicken, braised tomatoes, jerk spices. We rub it down with a dry jerk rub. We grill it, and then we braise it in tomatoes with jerk paste and local Jersey tomatoes. Um, it is amazing uh, with rice and vegetables. $9.99, it is a bargain. Um, so the tuna will sell out, absolutely will sell out uh, tonight. $19.99 entree, it's like $33 on our menu, $33. It, it, folks, it's the safest tuna that I can buy, that I know to buy. It is by far, you will buy no safer tuna out there. It, uh, Wild Planet sells a similar tuna in a pouch, so you can make like canned tuna fish with it. It's pricey, pricey. In fact, maybe I should get some of that for Thursday. Um, so if anyone wants to make tuna fish salad from very high quality tuna. Um, Jamie, I'm gonna buy Wild Planet tuna um, in the pouches for um, for Thursday. Oh, perfect, I just was gonna tell you to book order that today. You're just telling me to order that, okay, great. So if you wanna make tuna fish at home, there's no need to buy $17, $18 pound albacore tuna. You can actually buy it in this pouch already cooked like canned tuna. I will get that in um, Thursday for everybody. So, um, Michael's saying, I will run this special uh, this weekend at Timberwolves. So Michael owns a restaurant up on the Canadian border on the American side uh, in Maine, Michael, or Vermont. Michael, just drop, drop your location where you're at. Uh, Michael follows us here and Michael also follows my coaching business. Uh, if you don't know, Jamie and I coach other restaurants. I've written a couple books on marketing. I write for Forbes Business Council. Uh, I love helping restaurateurs um, just blow their sales up and, and, uh, and run a successful business. And Michael follows all of our stuff on that side as well as a restaurant. And I encourage a lot of restaurant owners to follow what I'm doing in my business here because it'll give you ideas on how to run your business in um, wherever you are across the, the country or across the world. We've worked with clients all over. Uh, we work with clients in England, um, Italy. Uh, we have a current client in New Zealand right now, and we have clients all over the U.S. So um, that we help market, and it's a very tough, challenging time right now for a lot of restaurants. And a lot of our restaurant clients are doing fantastic, um, doing amazing. Um, so because they're in, in implementing a lot of the techniques that we're doing here and getting in front of people and getting attention and offering a good quality product. So, Michael, if you can just drop down your location where you're at, uh, Timberwolves, I know, is up there up north. So, um, lots of more stuff coming in today. Um, I, in the beginning of this, this video, I talked about chopped garlic, American chopped garlic. If you, went to, if you went to ShopRite right now and bought chopped garlic, I'm gonna read off the ingredients to you, all right? Um, ShopRite.com, spice, spice rolled minced garlic. Um, four and a half ounces, um, ours is five ounces, ours is three bucks, this is $2.50 at ShopRite, if you went to buy this, ours is 50 cents more, and it's a half an ounce more. Ours is uh, California Ranch, 100% California American garlic with local sunflower oil, um, cold pressed, uh, unfiltered, unfined, the real deal in oil. That's what ours is packed in. We're packing these ourselves here. We're selling these for $3. You keep it in your refrigerator for, hey Jay, you keep it in your refrigerator for two, three weeks, you can use it, no problem. Keep it in your refrigerator. Do not leave it out overnight on your counter. Keep it in your refrigerator. Garlic's not good to leave in oil at room temperature um, that can cause botulism. You wanna keep it in the refrigerator. So, it's one of the things we learned in culinary school. Um, so Spice World, minced garlic, if you go to buy this off the shelf right now or shoprite.com, you're going to get, um, actually that's the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong one, shoprite.com, Vita Rose, Vita Rose chopped garlic. Um, ingredients, first thing ingredient is water, second ingredient is dehydrated garlic, dehydrated garlic, third ingredient is, and the dehydrated garlic is probably Chinese garlic, the third ingredient is soybean oil, probably with hexane gas and genetically modified. 
phosphoric acid, potassium sorbate, and sodium benzate as a preservative, all right? Um, you don't wanna be eating that. You don't wanna be eating um, GMO soy oil, uh, especially with hexane gas in it. And it's not really like, uh, this is not really, a, um, um, this is not like the chopped garlic. You can get a garlic clove and chop yourself. That's what we're doing. We're taking garlic cloves, we're chopping them, we're putting them in oil. Um, it's a convenience product we're selling. It is $3. Uh, we sold a, a couple of those yesterday. We packed a couple more for today. Folks, we have on our website, aromatimebistro.com, a grocery list that's updated every single day. My assistant goes on a list every day that I update, and then he goes on to our website and updates it. It's not quite 100% um, accurate because we do sell out of things. Strawberries were sold out yesterday. We sold our, our, our organic strawberries like that yesterday. The good news is more are coming in today very, very, very soon. Um, we have organic butternut squash coming in tomorrow. Actually, not organic, but it's IPM, Integrated Pest Management, from a local farm, butternut squash. That'll be $2 a pound. We have a lot more. We doubled our order on apple cider. Apple cider uh, comes from a local producer here, Sam Scott uh, Orchards, uh, fresh press. That'll come in. We have double the amount this week because it sold out in one day last week. Gallons of this cider are $8. Um, super high quality cider from a local apple producer, cider producer, uh, non-alcoholic this is, non we have we have plenty of cider. You want cider on draft with alcohol, we have hard, hard cider. This is fresh pressed apple cider. By the gallon, $8, it is a bargain. I don't think you can go into the store and buy it for $8 like that. Um, we're selling it for $8 and it's fresh right from the farm. So, um, let's see. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, oh, Ellie's saying add garlic to my dinner order. Ellie, did you call in or did you leave an order here? Folks, the best thing to do is do not leave us orders on email. Do not leave us orders in inboxes. We are so busy. Our inbox every day gets filled, filled with comments, um, emails. Um, it's better to actually call. If you're gonna email an order, call and make sure we've got your order. We're not, we're not encouraging the email or message at all because we just simply miss things. Um, like the phones are already nonstop ringing this morning like crazy. Um, I've, well, when I've been on this phone call, I've seen Jamie answer the phone four times to take orders, all right? So, and again, folks, thank you for the support. We really, really appreciate it. I've gotta jump back in the kitchen. It's almost nine o'clock, a quarter to nine. Um, I've gotta finish cooking the 125 meals today. My son and I are gonna go on a 50 mile bike ride as soon as lunch meals go out, as soon as all my stuff is done. I'm gonna go on a 50 mile bike ride. We're gonna leave Ellenville, we're gonna go up um, to the reservoir, maybe eat, we're gonna go towards the Ashokan Reservoir. He has everything mapped out. He has everything mapped out, and um, so he knows what we're doing. So that's our plan this afternoon. I'll be back by four o'clock to uh, rock and roll in the kitchen tonight. So that's the plan. We have um, uh, three orders coming in today, three more delivery trucks coming in today to bring us some high quality, organic, sustainable, local. The Farm Hub comes tomorrow, and the Farm Hub comes on Friday. We have Ronnie Brook yogurt coming this week. Ronnie Brook yogurt, local grass-fed yogurt, uh, more Chase Home cheese, uh, the Charousse, uh, the Moonlight, and the um, Camembert. We have a lot of charcuterie in. Thursday night is burger night. It's $9.99 burger night on Thursday night. I'm also gonna mix up this week and throw in a venison burger. The venison burger I can't do for $9.99. Venison meat, it's expensive. It's probably 50, 60% more than our ground beef but I will do a venison burger at a fantastic price, probably $12.99 we're probably looking at doing our venison burger at. Um, so stay tuned for our venison burger and our regular burgers this week. Uh, every, whenever we've done a venison burger, an elk burger, we've, we've sold them and we've sold out instantly. So I, uh, as an experiment, I bought some venison uh, this week and, and we're gonna do a venison burger and see how that goes. I can't do it for $9.99 though, I just can't. It's, I would lose money doing that. So, uh, but our regular burgers will be $9.99. So, folks, 647-3000, call ASAP if you want in on our tuna deal tonight. $19.99 for a tuna entree. That's it, $19.99. Um, lowest price we've ever done it. It's the safest tuna on the market. The beginning of this video, rewind if you're just tuning in. By the way, drop a comment, hashtag live, if you're watching live. If you're on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, go to the very beginning of the video and you're gonna see my 30 second demo on how to cook our tuna. Literally it takes 15 seconds to cook the tuna. Thaw it, sesame seeds, sear it hot oil. It's a very short process. It's awesome. 
Um, it'll last. The nice thing about buying frozen seafood, folks, and I saw a study done uh, probably 20 years ago, at least 20 years ago, there was a study done on the microbial count of seafood. And they took fresh Alaskan salmon, fresh Alaskan salmon, and they took Bruce Gore's frozen at sea salmon. Bruce Gore was a pioneer in, in, in the whole frozen at sea concept uh, of high quality frozen seafood. So they took Bruce Gore salmon, and most, most fish now, they catch it and they freeze it on the boat, frozen at sea or frozen on shore is what you wanna look for, F-A-S, F-O-S. And you'll see that terminology on a lot of the seafood that we sell. F-A-S, frozen, on the, frozen at sea, uh, they catch it, they freeze it right then and there. They don't allow it to sit three, four, five, six days and then freeze it. It's caught and processed. And these boats that go out, like the tuna boats go out for six weeks at a time. They're catching and processing. There's a team there that processes, a team that catches, catch, in processed, frozen within hours of catching it. The fish does not have a chance to hit rigor mortis. When you freeze a fish like that the proper way, when you defrost it, they, they, they listed the microbe count of, of a fish that was caught and shipped three days later versus like froth, stuff that you thaw overnight. Virtually zero microbial count when you thaw fish from your freezer and let it sit out for the day in your refrigerator. Basically zero microbial count. The fish, most of these producers are freezing the fish before it hits rigor mortis. It is fresher than fresh. So when people say, I don't eat frozen seafood, Marcus, I'm like, well, what's the opposite of frozen? Um, they're like, I only eat fresh, I only eat fresh. I'm like, well, what's the opposite of fresh? The opposite of fresh is rotten, right? You're not, nobody eats rotten seafood, right? Uh, or at least on purpose. So frozen seafood is fresher than fresh. If you eat fresh seafood, you will definitely, if you're concerned about the quality of seafood and fresh seafood and microbial counts, you will want frozen at sea or frozen on shore. Frozen on shore means you're catching it and they're landing in the day boats and they're freezing it right on shore. Frozen at sea is the boats out there and they're freezing it at sea. Very high quality frozen seafood comes like that now. Um, it wasn't like that years and years ago. They cryogenically freeze it. They blast freeze this negative 80 or something. Um, so it's been, uh, you know, this frozen seafood industry has come a long way. It's much different than you buying fish at ShopRite or at your fishmonger or wherever you're going and taking it home and say, okay, I have an extra piece a day later, two days later and freezing it. Your freezer at home is not designed to freeze food. It's designed to store frozen food, already frozen food. A lot of people don't know this. You're not, that freezer is not designed to take a piece of chicken breast. You can do it and not gonna kill you, but it's not designed to take a raw chicken breast, put it in your freezer and freeze it properly. Freezers that freeze things, designed to freeze, are freezers that actually have these big circulators in them, massive circulators, and they're blast freezers, and they're much colder than our normal freezer at home. In fact, our freezers at home, you know, we have this little fan that blows a little bit of air, and it's, by the time we cover it up with ice cream and other junk, um, that, mo that air motion never really circulates properly in our freezer to begin with. A lot of us have chest freezers that have zero circulation. Chest freezers freeze from the, the outside liner inside, right? That's how they freeze. And that's, that cold air then moves forward. If you have a chest freezer and you want to freeze something, you put it on the side against the wall, the liner, that's the coldest part. You put it on the bottom. Those are the coldest parts of your chest freezer. That's where you would freeze something. But your home freezer is not designed to freeze. It's designed to take something frozen from the grocery store and keep storing it frozen. That's why it takes overnight to put a couple chicken breasts in, packed in plastic, and freeze. In a blast freezer in a commercially productive production place, they literally freeze fish in minutes, five, 10. If you take a little tiny filet of fish and it goes through a conveyor belt through a blast freezer, it instantly freezes it. Your, the cell damage is extremely minimal. So this is why it's much moister for you to buy a frozen fish that's designed like this than you to take take fish that's left over and then freeze it because your home freezer is gonna take 24 hours to freeze it. That's where all the damage happens on the molecular level and it just breaks all the cells and they start pissing water, right? And that's, you get the, you get the fish the next, the next time you thaw it and you eat it and you're like, man, this is just like dry and chewy and I don't like frozen seafood and I don't never wanna eat frozen seafood again. That's the wrong frozen seafood. So high quality frozen seafood, always for the win. It's the fresher than fresh, it's the safest. In fact, a lot of states have strict regulations on sushi fish where you have to have certain fish or all fish 
frozen before you serve it raw because that's a way to kill off microbes. It's a way to kill off worms. It's a way to kill off things that are in the fish by freezing it at that temperature, nothing lives and it kills everything. So it's actually safer than fresh fish. And realistically, if they're catching salmon in Alaska on Monday, they land it, it goes to Seattle, consolidated the next day, then Seattle gets shipped to New York, to the seafood distributor. It goes to the seafood distributor on Wednesday. By Thursday, Friday, it's on the delivery truck to the chef. The chef stocks up on, on Saturday. It's already caught on Monday. I mean, sorry, the chef stocks up on Friday. The fish was caught on Monday. The chef stocks up for it because he doesn't order every day from that seafood distributor. He only orders two days a week. So the chef has now stocked up enough salmon to last him until the following Tuesday of fresh salmon. By the time you're eating salmon on Monday or salmon on Sunday from a restaurant or a, 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 the grocery store, it's already a week old. It's already a week old. And a lot of people would freak out if they said, wow, this caught, was caught a week ago. They would totally, totally freak out. I don't want to eat week old seafood. Folks, seafood will last 21 days if it's properly iced, drained, and proper temperature every single day. I've done the experiment myself. I got halibut, uh, tilapia in Colorado. We used to buy live tilapia from a local alligator farm. It used to come live on Friday. I did this experiment when when Steve Connolly Seafood, when I was on one of their seafood courses, they said, fresh seafood, 21 days, certain fish goes less, like bluefish, high oil content, um, high fat content, goes five, six days, you got bluefish, you gotta eat it. So certain fish vary, but a lot of fish will last three weeks. And I said, this is crazy. Trout fish, cat, tila catfish, tilapia, all these fish will last that long. I took the tilapia, we got it in live, we processed it, we stuck it on a tray with perforated holes, plastic on top, ice every day, drain ice every day. Ice. After 18 days, and I've told this story many times, after 18 days, we actually cooked the tilapia and ate it. it. Had no odor, cooked it and ate it, and it was fine. After 18 days, when you walk into a seafood counter and you smell fish, that is not a good sign. The only fish you ever want to smell is scallops, and they will smell of a sweet flavor. When scallops do not smell, they're not fresh. When Seafood smells, it's not fresh, all right? You do not want odor on any seafood. When you walk into a seafood counter and you smell that odor, there's something there that's fishy. No pun intended, but there's something there that's fishy, all right? Buy frozen seafood for the win, for the safeness, for the freshness, um, for just the overall win. You put it in your freezer, and a lot of times it's a much better price than, than the stuff that's sitting out fresh. Go into the freezer section, high quality. You go to ShopRite and buy frozen Alaskan salmon, uh, but it's processed in China, and it probably has um, uh, triphosphate, probably triphosphates in it or something. Just be wary and, and, and watch. I know Walmart is all processed in China because that's how they keep their labor down, right? So um, about five years ago, the same company we use, Alaska Gold, I saw it in ShopRite, and it must have been a mistake, and I went to ShopRite, and they're sitting sides of Alaska Gold salmon. I'm like, whoa, and I asked the seafood manager, I said, what's going on? She's like, yeah, that's what we got in this time. So I was like, wow, and I went back the next time, three weeks later, she's like, that was just a one-time thing. I don't know how we got it, but it was in the system and it's gone. Alaska Gold, look them up. That's the seafood supplier we use for a lot of our stuff, for our salmon, for our halibut, for our black cod that's coming in, and for our albacore tuna. Those four fish come from Alaska Gold. It's a co-op in Sitka, Alaska. Amazing, amazing fishery. We've been using them for years. Everything is one hook, one fish. One hook, one fish. Nothing's netted. You can go buy cheap netted salmon. And I've gone through this many times. There's a couple different ways to catch salmon. One hook, one line's the best. Our tuna is one hook, one line. Um, our halibut is one hook, one line. All this stuff is one hook, uh, one hook, one fish. One hook, one fish. One, one line, one hook, one fish. That's the best way the fish goes through the least amount of stress. It is impossible to get net caught fish sushi grade because the fish sit there and swim with each other and they get caught and they get entrapped and they go through a lot of stress being in nets for hours upon hours and that's not sushi quality fish anymore. So that's what that is. Folks, I gotta get back in the kitchen and cook. Uh, went on a little bit longer than I wanted to. Rind this back to the beginning and see my 30 second demo on how I cook our tuna here at Aromatime. Aromatimebeautiful.com, click our menu and click our grocery section. You will see everything we have to offer. We do deliver. Um, we ask for a day's notice if you want like grocery deliveries and things like that. So 647-3000, talk to you later, folks.